plugs and sockets. It is necessary to use the correct type of plug to fit the socket on the transmitter and occasionally on the base of the tail of the antenna. Base station transceivers normally require a PL259 or N type plug. Mobile devices may have a BNC socket, as might handhelds, but the smaller ones often have SMA socket. Take care with these small sockets as they can be quite fragile. Figure 6.2 shows an N type, a BNC, PL259, and an SMA plug for coaxial cable. The center pins pin is the live conductor. The body of the plug connects the screen. Note that the N-Type and PL259 plugs are larger and the SMA plug is smaller than the BNC. The coax inner is connected to the center pin of the plug. It is important that the braid outer makes a good connection to the body of the plug so the screening is continuous from the coaxial cable to the body of the device it is connected to. Failing to do that may cause the feeder to radiate on transmission and pick up interference or receive on receive. It is also possible that the transmitted RF power transmitter RF power amplifier may be damaged. Waveguides. Foundation amateurs also have low power access to the 10 gigahertz band. Losses in coaxial feeder are high at that frequency, so waveguides are used. They are small rectangular metal tubes, as shown in the picture 6.3. The RF energy travels towards the antenna as a wave entirely within the confines of waveguide. There's a waveguide. Antennas. The antenna, sometimes called an aerial, actually radiates the signal. It converts the electrical signals from the feeder into radio waves and vice versa on receive. It needs to be designed for frequency or wavelength in use. There are five antennas that we need to consider for the foundation exam. Once you are licensed, the choice of antenna is entirely up to you. The dipole. The dipole is a basic antenna and is half a wave length long. This means the size of the dipole and all other antennas must be suitable for the intended frequency of use. If it is mounted vertically as shown in figure 6.3, it, it radiates equally in all horizontal directions. If it is mounted horizontally, which is more common at HF, it radiates well from the sides but not off the ends. Given the choice it should be side on to the desired direction of maximum signal but this is not always possible in a small garden. Figure 6.3 half wave dipole, dipole antenna. The quarter wave ground plane. This antenna gets its name from the fact that radiating element radiating element is a quarter of the wavelength long, often written as the upside down y slash and a four. Since the, sim the symbol for wavelength is the Greek letter lambda or lambda, the radiating or active element is always vertical. See figure 6.4. The horizontal wires are called radials and form a ground plane, an earthed surface which acts like a mirror to radio waves. The transmitted signal is omnidirectional, that it radiates equally in all horizontal directions. It, is, it does not radiate upwards towards the sky. The Yagi. The Yagi antenna is directional. Most TV antennas are Yagis mounted to point at the TV transmitter. The antenna is able to focus the radio signal in a particular direction in much the same way 
as a searchlight or car headlight beams the light in one direction. Maximum signal is towards the tapering end. Figure 6.5. In figure 6.5, this is to the right. The Yagi can be mounted with the elements vertical, as shown, or horizontally. For good communication, the transmitter and receive Yagis must point towards each other and be either both horizontally or both vertically mounted. The thicker the vertical line is actually a dipole, which must be half a wavelength long. It is the active or driven element and is connected to the feeder. A balance, see later, is needed if coaxial feeder is used. Figure 6.5, the Yagi antenna. A Yagi can have one or more detectors. The Yagi is a useful antenna because of its focusing ability. The signal transmitted in the wanted direction is increased, while that in other directions is reduced. Greater range can be achieved or a lower transmit power could be used. The effective power in the wanted direction has increased by the focusing gain of the antenna. This gain is usually quoted by the manufacturer. This is a development of the one quarter wave ground plane. It is better at directing signals towards the horizon rather than up in the air. It is always mounted with the active element vertical and is omnidirectional. Figure 6.6 .6 shows vertical active element is 5 eighths of a wavelength long. Due to the size of this type of antenna, it is most often used on HF, VHF, UHF frequencies where wavelengths are shorter. Figure 6.6, .6, the 5 eighths wave ground plane antenna. The coil at this base is part of the matching of the antenna to the coaxial cable. Matching is described later. The end fed. The end fed long wire shown in the drawing figure 6.7 was popular for receiving HF from both amateur and international broadcast stations where the wavelength might be longer than the guard. It is likely to be a random length and may present a matching problem when used with a transmitter. A device called an antenna matching unit, AMU, will allow for this and enable the antenna to accept power from the transmitter. This is explained further in and later in this chapter. How long a wire antenna can be connected from the house to a tree or pole in the garden? How a long wire antenna can be connected from the house or tree or pole in the garden? The top drawing shows the feed at the house end and the bottom drawing shows the feed at the garden end. The antenna is often set up with far end fixed. The antenna is often set up with the far end fixed to a pole or tree and the end closest to the house secured by a short insulated rope to the chimney or suitable fixing. With the end dropping down the side of the house connecting to the transmitter, unfortunately there are high voltages or high currents close to the house and the strong radiation is quite likely to upset the television or other electronic equipment, including neighbors' equipment. If such an antenna is unavoidable, it is better to feed it at the far end using a barrier feeder as shown in the drawing figure 6.7. This is discussed later in the chapter on EMC. Radiation Pattern Figure 6.8 shows the radiation pattern or polar diagram of a dipole. Maximum radiation is at the right angle to the dipole and minimum off, off the ends. The maximum is at the right angle 
in all directions, including into the paper and out. If the dipole was mounted vertically, then the maximum would still be at right angles radiating equally to all points on the horizon. Look down from above, the radiation pattern would be a circle with the top end of the dipole as a dot in the centre. Figure 6.8, the polar diagram or radiation pattern of a dipole antenna. The maximum radiation is at right angles to the antenna, the minimum radiation off the ends. The Yagi is directional, focusing most of the radiated signal in a particular direction, figure 6.9, shows the polar diagram of a Yagi. The main lobe shows the forward direction has a much stronger signal with side lobes showing weaker signals in other directions. Minimum radiation is to the rear. This focusing gain is equally true as a receiving antenna. A transmission received from the direction of the main lobe will nearly always be the strongest and clearest from the transmitting station in that direction. The polar diagram or radiation pattern of the Yagi antenna. The maximum radiation is to the front of the Yagi, that is to the right of the drawing. Polarization. The polarization of an antenna means which way up is it? This matters more at VHF and UHF and higher frequencies. The dipole or Yagi mentioned earlier could be mounted either horizontally or mounted with the active element vertical and radiate vertically polarized radio waves. The polarization of the antenna also determines the polarization of the radio wave. For all the antennas we have seen here, the polarization of the wave is the same as the live or driven element of the antenna. A vertical dipole or Yagi will radiate a vertical radio wave on HF. The receiver polarization is not as critical as the VHF or UHF. At these frequencies a vertical antenna will best receive vertical waves. It does not matter much which polarization is chosen as long as both antennas are the same. However, ground plane and 5.8 antennas are always mounted with the active element vertical and radiate vertically polarized radio waves. Mobile antennas mounted on a vehicle are vertical for practical reasons. There is an amateur convention at VHF and UHF that when using FM the antenna is vertical most mobile operation uses FM and SSB operation uses horizontal polarization. Feeding and matching antennas. The connection to an antenna is known as its feed point. If a 50 ohm resistor is connected to the end of a 50 ohm feeder then all the power will be absorbed by the resistor and turned into heat. If the resistor is not 50 ohms then some of the signal is reflected back down the feeder towards the transmitter. When connected to an antenna, the energy is radiated at an electromagnetic radio wave and the antenna looks like a resistor to the signal on the feeder. However, if the antenna does not look like, like a 50 ohm resistor, then again some signals will be reflected back down the feeder. Getting the feed point impedance of the antenna right is known as correct matching. If the antenna is correct, is the correct size, half a wave length long. If it is a dipole, then it will be a good matching to the feeder and will radiate maximum RF energy. If an antenna is used on the wrong frequency, so it is not the correct size, then it will not match the feeder and some of the energy will not be radiated back. It's reflected back down the feeder. This effect can be seen in a swimming pool when the wave, the ripples in the water is reflected by the hard side of the pool in a pond which needs at the side the wave energy is absorbing in the reeds and no reflection is seen that corresponding 
to the correct matching of the feeder. On HF, the polarization is not critical since the polarization of the waves can change in the ionosphere. See propagation chapter. Physical room and EMC cons considerations may dictate the choice. That said, a horizontal wire is still better at receiving horizontally polari polar <laughs> polarized radio waves. Thanks for watching my channel. Please like and subscribe. 7-3, all the best.